Hello, hello, hello. Hello, um, so hi guys, welcome, welcome back. So Thank here you. we are once again. Um, you know, I just got myself a little bit distracted. I was um whistling here a song that I listened to like um 30 minutes ago. And uh, I realized it was eight already. Like I was so distracted. I was in all my own world, but yeah. Uh, fortunately, I didn't uh, make you guys wait for too long. So here we are. Okay. Um, tonight, people, we are going to be talking about um, Dominic Toretto's favorite word and it's family, okay? If you have ever watched um, Fast and Furious, any of those movies, you may know that that's one of the things he mentions all of the time. So today, um, as I said, we're going to be um, talking about family and, uh, well, some of the members and, uh, well, for some of, the, of you guys who have been with me before and know that I like to, um, to carry out reading practices, tonight we're also going to be doing a reading practice about um, complex families or compound families. Um, so, yeah, that's part of the plan for tonight. And, uh, well, the question that I have for you guys tonight is going to be kind of simple, but at the same time, you know, I always like you to go a little bit farther and explain a little bit more about, well, your idea, your insights on the question that I always have for you. So I hope you guys had an amazing day today uh, and already, you know, to continue practicing, to continue um, learning just a bit more tonight. I, if we are to be honest, it's more of a practice because um, I think the topic of family is one that is covered on basically every single course. Um, maybe you might get to to learn one one or two words, but yeah, talking about family is something relatively common in, in the English um, learning process. But um, the question that I have is going to be, let's see, it's going to be an if question. Um, so, if you had the chance to go on vacation um, right away, right away, who would you bring along? Who would you bring along? All right, so that's the question. If you had the chance to go on vacation right away, like right now, I'm not giving you any, two, any, any other second. You have to go now. Who are you bringing with? Who are you um, bringing along? So that is a question. Now, if it's a family member, um, I want to know, well, not only if it's a family member, actually, in all cases, I think we should add this tiny question there. And it is why, you know, because maybe behind you picking this person, there is a reason. So I would like to hear, or I think um, for the practice, it will be better if we hear the reason why. Why would you like to bring that specific person on your dream vacation? So um, we're going to start, I think, with um, Walter, because yesterday I didn't ask you the question. So tell me, Walter, if you had the chance to go on vacation right away, like you have to go now, who are you bringing and why? I think uh, um, I, I bring uh, a relative near for me. For example, my wife. My wife, my my little brother, my son, mm -hmm. and my grandma and grandma. Okay. The reason is because uh, they're the the relative near from me. I live with them. Oh, all right. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Nice. 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 That will be something great. Where would you like to take these people to? If you had the chance to pick where to go, where would you like to take them? Uh, I think, uh, for example, I don't know, in, in Occident, Occident uh -huh. there are some places beautiful like uh, Los Naranjos. On the like western, it. oh yeah, yeah. that's on, uh, yeah. on northern yeah. Sonsonate, I think, right? Yeah, the weather is so good. I mm -hmm. like it. It's, it's cool. So cold. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yes. There, are some, like some, there are so many restaurants uh, over the principal street. Oh, okay. Where do you can to 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 eat a lot of things is so cheap, yeah. All right. I think even though to try to to go to the Ruta de las Flores mm -hmm. and visit another place and the area Occidental Salvador. 
Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so we can say Western El Salvador, if we want to talk about, you know, that side of the country, Western yeah. El Salvador. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, Los Naranjos. I've never been. I was about to go. Uh, I think it was like a year ago, me and some friends uh, with yeah. the people I went to Alpital with. Uh, we were planning. Oh my another, God. Yeah, we were planning another trip, but we couldn't figure it out because, well, now we all work and yeah, it was not you know possible but yeah i have heard and i was looking through um airbnb and checking on some of the of the cottages and houses that they rent uh around that area and it do it does sorry uh look to be very very beautiful so great all right so you you will bring basically all of your family to los naranjos very nice yeah uh now let's move on and um luis i have one question for you are we done with the cows do we have new cattle? <laughs> oh, no. No. Um, um, I, 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 I speak with with my co with Sandra uh, mm -hmm. a few minutes, and I tell um, the cow today's uh, is is dropped the, the the production of milk because mm. the weather is very hot, mm -hmm. hot, so hot. Um, I keep waiting for the babies to be born. Maybe okay. the um, El Corralero and, uh, tell me uh, maybe when the the moon are in the Cuarto Menguante. Okay. Maybe this is uh, uh, six six or seven days from now. And um, more or less. Okay, cool. Yes. So astronomy, cuarto menguante. I don't know how to translate that, <laughs> but I think I, that is a new topic that I will have to study about. <laughs> um, so yeah, all right. Um, so you have had your practice already. We're going to move on to someone else. Uh, let's see. How about Jancy? In your case, Jancy, if you had to go to a vacation right now, you know, you, can, you have to live tonight. Um, where would you like to go and who are you bringing along with? I would like to go to uh, Guatemala in this okay. moment. Okay. <laughs> if I went uh, uh, now, um, I would go uh, go out with my old, old, I don't know, my eldest son mm -hmm. because because he is support me without asking, and he wouldn't let me waste time. Or he don't ask me. Okay. And I wouldn't need much preparation, maybe to go to Guatemala. He is um, ready to, it's fast to prepare something. Like but, the, the, but yes, but my, my daughter and my other son, mm -hmm. no, they ask me for all. What do you what do you need? What do you, do you eat? Where are we going? Yes. <laughs> okay. At what time and everything? Yeah, I have I have seen that. I have lived with that before. Um, have you been to Guatemala before, Jancy? Yes. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. So um it will be the same for me, you know. If you ask me like at this point right now, where I would like to go and who I will bring along with. I think I would say I would like to go to Lago Atitlan in Guatemala, and I would like to bring my girlfriend because we have been planning that trip. We're planning to go on our next anniversary, which is in May. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an idea that we have, and if I had the chance, that's what I would do. But yeah, Guatemala is a very beautiful country. I mean, our country is beautiful, of course, but Guatemala has like a, a special richness from nature. You know, I have yeah. been, I have been like, eight times i don't know many times <laughs> yeah but um every time i visit guatemala i find new details about it and new things that i just can't stop from like thinking that it is a very very beautiful country but all right very good thank you very much for sharing um uh, moving on how about sandra sandra let us know if you had the chance to go on vacation anywhere um where would you like to go and who are you bringing along with well, uh, hello everybody. Hello there. Um, well, um, of course, my my husband, maybe my stepsons, with that with him, 
and only, uh, or maybe um, only my husband, because you know, uh, everything is very expensive, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> yeah. And where would you like to go? Where would you like to take them on vacation? Um, um, maybe, maybe Canada, Vancouver, or something like that. All right. It's so expensive. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she's going for it. You know? expensive. She's going for it. Well, you know, but be because we have a uh, free free tickets. Oh, okay, cool. Yes, that, that's yeah, why. That's... You know? Okay, Change. so if you have free tickets and you're going to save on tickets, why not go into Switzerland? It's your oh, dream. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is too, it is too too expensive. It's too expensive, yeah. I have heard the same about Italy. One of my friends, um, well, we are Catholic, so there was like a meeting with the Pope, um, like eight years ago in Poland, and um, she had the chance to go, you know, with other people from from the from church, and she told me that in Italy, a bottle of water was around five dollars. My yeah, and it was like what. A yes. bottle of water, like we have it for two quarters. We we even cry when we have it for sixty cents. And she was like, "Nope, in Italy, you will not believe it, but it is almost five dollars." So not no euros. Well, yeah, euros. Yeah, but she told me it was like uh, four euros, I think. Uh, yeah. But that was that rounded up around five dollars, and it was like, I was surprised. I was really surprised because I know that, you know, some countries are very attractive to, for tourists like um, France and, and, and Italy. But yeah, there are some things that are just mind blowing. You know, they just can, they just surprise you. But yeah, yeah. maybe Switzerland would not be the best idea. You know, we're going to save on tickets. We're going to, we're going to have to sell the house just to spend two days there. <laughs> yes. My, my stepson works in, in Bianca. So uh we have the, the the tickets free tickets for free for free yeah for free. okay yeah. can they take you anywhere like can they send you anywhere or um are, are there like a specific destinations where you can go uh, no all the destinations avianca goes oh okay nice huh? yeah yeah because mm -hmm. yeah, my best friend she works for um i told you guys before she works for um Qatar airways but the only thing she can do for us like to take us to europe uh, is to get um, discounts. Like she cannot oh. get free tickets. If uh, Qatar will Qatar Airways will fly here, we will have the same advantage. But um, yeah, she says that she has an allowance of like four tickets a year for friends and oh, cool. seven tickets for family. So that's pretty cool. Very nice. Very yeah, nice. that's pretty cool. Yeah, but she, if you live in Europe or any place, anywhere where um, <clears throat> Qatar Airways can get to, because yeah, flights from here to Spain, I think are like a thousand something, a thousand or like $1,400, something like that. Yeah. So yeah, but anyway, okay. Okay, thank you. Ooh, very good, very good. It will be very nice. Uh, moving on, let's hear now maybe from uh, Lourdes. How about you, Lourdes? What do you think? If you had the chance to go anywhere, you know, to have a vacation, with um, mm -hmm. some people who were, first thing, where would you like to go? And second thing, who would you bring along? Um, hi, uh, well, if we assume everything is free. <laughs> yes, let's assume that everything is free. I forgot to tell you that detail, but yes, let's assume that your boss is paying for it. Okay, then I would like to go to Europe um, to a Maybe why not Switzerland, Germany, everything. Okay, <laughs> yeah. If my boss is paying for it, you know, I'll do whatever. <laughs> yeah, I would like to take the train that that crosses all a lot of countries. I I I watch a movie about that, and the view is amazing and everything. Or the second option too is the Machu Picchu. I always wanted to go there, mm -hmm. and I will bring my friends because it requires like. To walk a lot so my family is like no <laughs> no no thank you yeah <laughs> all right so either europe or machu picchu i have heard that there are tours uh from here from el salvador to machu picchu that are not inexpensive but they're not super expensive i have never been i have a couple friends who have and actually mm -hmm. i was supposed to ask them like um a month ago i was supposed to ask them because i was trying to figure out you know like where to go for um my proposal 
if I, I mean, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. trying, I want to get married. So I feel like um, I want to go to a, to a great place to ask her. Um, but yeah, I haven't mm -hmm. asked about Machu Picchu, so I'm going to a tea plant. <laughs> Local is better. <laughs> Local yeah. is better. All right. But yeah, very nice. Very nice uh, destinations. All right. Um, how about the case for Daniel? What do you think, Daniel? If the question for tonight is, if you had the chance to go on vacation anywhere, um, where would you like to go and who are you bringing along? Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Um, I would like uh, to go to Europe, especially the Netherlands or Norway, mm -hmm. because I really like these cultures and uh, and its landscape and if if i want to go if i to go uh if i pardon if i have to travel in america mm -hmm. i would like to go argentina um peru okay um Chile, in Chile. Chile. All right. And I prefer to go alone. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Now that you know English, I think it is a nice idea, you know. But if you don't, like when when I, I think of this all the time, like people who don't know English, I think they will have a very, very, very hard time um traveling on their own because you know, getting places and getting to communicate with people will be very difficult. But if you are an English speaking person, I think you can go anywhere in the world nowadays and there will be at least one person who will help you out to get places or to, um, you know, get to know a little bit of the culture or something. But yeah, I think traveling alone is also very um, healthy for one's um, state, for one state of being or like, um, you know, your, your um, mindfulness and inner peace. So good it will also be a good idea all right now the last person that i'm going to be asking this question tonight is going to be uh i think janet so tell me janet if you had to travel or if you got the chance to travel anywhere go on vacation um where would you like to go and who would you bring along um okay starting uh from the point that all is free mm -hmm. Um, I would like to go to Japan with my daughter because uh, first from first time uh, because we don't have many time to be together because I am all the day uh, from Monday to Friday on the, at the office and uh, we don't have time together. Well, uh, and and uh, Japan because she likes to match all the all the things uh, like um, anime, a manga, mm -hmm. these, these things. And then we like to go to Korea because I like all the things from In Korea. Korea. Yeah. Uh, K-pop, K-beauty, K-dramas, uh, all, 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 all the culture of Korea. All right, very nice. So it will be an Asian trip. Uh, okay, guys, there is something I haven't told you before. And I mean, for the ones who I have worked with before and for the ones who are, uh, you know, with me for the first time, I have to tell you this. The reason why I ask you these questions with such freedom, like I tell you, you know, imagine that it's for free, that you don't have to pay for anything. is because if we keep the questions based in our reality, I think that the answers will be kind of boring, you know, like the answers will be so local that it will be hard for us to imagine something outside of the box. And what I want from you guys is to imagine yourself, to put yourself in a position that you are going all the way out from your comfort zone, all the way out from uh, our country. In, um, at, um, I mean, in some cases, and um, yeah, you can get, as creative as you want, just in case you wonder, you know, it's not like I'm a millionaire. It's not like I think, okay, you guys can spend anything, but um, yeah, that's the reason why. 
just so you know, just so you don't wonder um, why these questions are so open sometimes. But okay, um, thank you very much for all of you guys who have answered to these um, questions. Now, I wish I had a boss who will pay for my vacations. I have never uh, had such experience and I think it is very difficult in our country to have such experiences. But, you know, we have to think sometimes about things that we like. So we're going to be talking about compound family terms, but that is going to be the second topic that we're going to be landing on. Because first, we have to discuss noun classes after B. All right, so a noun class is a, a fraction of a sentence because all classes are basically fractions of sentences. You will need a, sorry, uh, a noun class, a, a verb class, and a um, complement, just so you have a well-structured sentence. Now, there are also independent and dependent classes. Independent classes are those that can stand alone, they, they can stand on their own, and dependent classes are the ones that depend on the information um, being held by the independent class. So, noun classes, are used to provide extra description of something that we are talking about. For example, here, we say an advantage of having an older brother, um, then we add the verb be, and in its conjugation here is going to be is, all right? So after that, we're going to introduce the noun class. And the noun class is going to be more like an explanation, like a wrap up to what we have just said. So we have introduced the topic and the topic will be the advantage that we have when we have an older brother. Now, what is the advantage? If we don't use these noun classes after B, we're never going to know what that information is. Now, using noun classes, um, you have two options. One of them is that you can use this um, tiny word here, the indicator that. And when you do that, the thing that happens is that um, the meaning of that noun class is going to be a stronger than if you just go with the verb. You can go with the verb anytime, no problem. For example, I can read this example as an advantage of having an older brother is you always have someone to help you. All right. We are okay with that. It's all right. And we don't really need to add this indicator right there in the middle. But if I say an advantage of having an older brother is that you always have someone to help you you are making the idea that having someone to help you is something very important. So um, you're pointing out that advantage. And uh, well, it is not a requirement, as I just said, but if you want to make your point feel more stronger, feel um, better based, you have, or at least you can use that, all right? So. Uh, moving on, we have, for example, this other one right here. The best thing about having brothers and sisters is you're never lonely, all right? If we just go with the verb be, you can say this, you're never lonely. But if you use that, is that you're never lonely. You, you know, the best thing about um, having brothers and sisters is that you're never lonely. All right, and um, when we use this, as I mentioned, when we're going to use these noun classes is whenever we're trying to explain something. And those explanations are also going to be uh, introduced with either of these words. You can use of, you can use about, or you can use with. Now, we have also in the information that that is a noun class after B is optional. Sorry, in a noun class after B is optional. Notice the prepositions that are used with the following nouns. So the prepositions will be this ones, of, about, and with. And uh, after we get to this section right here, when we introduce the verb be, um, there is where you can make the decision of using that or going only with the, the rest of the explanation. Um, I would like to hear if you guys have any, um, any examples, you know, that we can, we can use in order to introduce um, something apart from this because here we're following basically the same topic from tonight which is family um, but I don't know if you may if any example can come to your mind using these kind of um, noun classes yeah, mister I have mm -hmm. a problem with the exercise 1.8 mm -hmm. and number three number three and um, is I have a pro 
a problem because the the word or the preposition of about with is for this exercise can I don't know how do you say ninguna ninguna anyone okay uh, the so exercise says uh, the exercise says I'm away at college. Uh -huh. The bad part is that I miss my family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, one sec. Can you guys see my screen right now? I think no, right? Yeah. What are you looking on? What are you seeing on my screen? Is it the exercise? Um, no, no, the, the presentation. Presentation. Okay, yeah, I will show slide. you. Okay, I will say I will show you it in a little bit. Um Okay. I'm almost away and the bad part. Can anybody help? Is teacher? that I miss my family. Sorry? Can anybody help? Sure thing, if you want to. Okay. I'm just trying to figure it out by my own, sorry. Okay. Yes. Um, I suppose that is the number three. Uh, yes. that said that but the, the correct answer is the bad part of being away is that I that I miss my family. Mm -hmm. The bad part yes. uh -huh. of being away. Yeah, that is the only thing. Yeah, that is the only answer that I, I think might work here. So I will send you guys the answer. I will send you guys the answer here through the chat. Okay. Uh, I, I wrote uh -huh. on this, on this uh, exercise the bad part of being away okay. at college. Yes. Uh -huh. If that I miss my family, and it's wrong. Yeah. The me. thing I think what will make it be wrong there is the fact that you use the word college. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think using the word college might be might be because uh -huh. uh, I think the best way to go if we're gonna follow that route would be something away. like yeah, the bad part of being away is I miss my family. I miss my family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can use is that or maybe just is I miss my family. The bad part of being away works, is yeah. that I miss my family or is I miss my family. Yeah, but either or, either or, uh, those two will be the ones that can work. Yeah, the bad part of being away is that I miss my family or the bad part of being away is I miss my family. Mm -hmm. Either of those two. Okay. So yeah. I got it. Okay. There we go. Okay. And it's advertised. Okay. Uh one sec. Here we go. <laughs> the thing is that I think Jenny takes two courses at the same time or something like that. But yeah, I have noticed that there's always like a like a like a like a difference there. All right. So uh I think you guys um have it solved. Is are there any more questions about uh, the exercise or do we have it clear in terms of the exercise here? About this exercise, no, but in the first, I have problems in the number 1.2. Mm -hmm. I have two bad. Yes. And you 1. need to, 2. yes, using a gerium, gerium, mm -hmm. or infinitive. Yes. And the number three and the number six is for me difficult. I don't know. Okay. I tried the, 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 the many. Forms, I don't know. Okay, so uh, number three, Tina, you visit your parents on the weekends, uh, don't you? Leslie, yes, I spend Sundays with them. I'm too busy to rest um, the rest of the week. Esa sería, ¿verdad? So Leslie prefers, yes. what does she prefer? Well, one of the options would be she prefers, uh, Leslie prefers visiting her parents mm -hmm. on the weekends. On the um, weekend? Yes. Or you can use to visit her parents on the on of the weekends on the weekends. So yes. visiting, huh? Yes, and two ways for us for answer to visit to visit her parents. On, ahí, ahí on hay the un weekends. error. Sí, ahí hay un error. Lo estoy viendo ahorita. Hay un error okay. y lo voy a reportar porque aparece to visit her parents off. No aparece on the weekend, sino off the weekend con una f oh. en lugar de una n. Entonces, eso, eso sí le va, le va a dar error si es así. Ah, oh, ok. Uh -huh. Pero eso es un error oh. en la plataforma. Sí, sería, aquí ya dice off the weekend, o sea, aquí aparece con una F y la respuesta uh -huh. correcta sería con una N. 
Ajá. Entonces, la mejor forma que podemos seguir tal vez sería por el momento usar el gerund. Sería visiting her parents on the weekend. Visiting, visiting her, parents. her parents on the weekend. On the weekend. Mm -hmm. yeah. visiting. visiting her parents on the weekend. Her parents on the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, weekends, and um, I, I tried. It's bad for me. I don't know. Visiting her parents. On the weekend. The weekend. Weekend. Yeah. Without the S. Yes. Without the yes, S. Without the S. No uh -huh. point because they say no point. I don't know. What is the problem with this? Um, maybe it's other space. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Did you add right, a period right. at the end? Agregó el yeah. punto al final? And no. And they say don't point. It's not necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Visiting mm -hmm. her parents on the weekends. That is the right answer. Visiting yes. her parents. Mm -hmm. on, on the weekend. Yeah, visiting her parents on the weekend. Weekends. Yes. I don't know. And the number six, I try. And the number six, I okay, don't know. So number six Josh. is Josh. Josh, what sort of volunteer work do you do for the library? Celia? Oh, sorry. Celia, I love kids, so I volunteer as children's storyteller on Saturdays. So Celia enjoys volunteer, volunteering mm -hmm. as a children's storyteller. Volunteers volunteering as, as a, a children. children's storyteller. storyteller. Mm -hmm. Recuerden que aquí en este caso no se puede um, colocar, ¿verdad? To, um, to volunteer, porque uh -huh. tenemos el verbo enjoy. Sí, mm -hmm. recuerden que cuando hablamos de los gerunds, es... eh, el, en, después de enjoy, vamos a colocar siempre un gerund. Sí, sería enjoy. volunteering. Voluntary. Ah, ok. Mm -hmm. Volunteering, sí. Entonces sería volunteering as a children's storyteller. Volunteer. Volunteering okay. as a children's storyteller. Ahorita se lo mando también aquí en el chat, and then you can, you can take it from there. Yeah. Volunteering as a children's storyteller. Recuerden que también a veces otra de las cosas que da problema es lo de las apóstrofes. En esta respuesta, ¿verdad? Que incluye apóstrofe, eso puede ser también a veces un, un problemita que se genere ahí. Ok. Thank you, teacher. You're very welcome. Teacher. Ok. Sí. Excuse me. Tell me. Tell the, me yes. the number three is always bad. Siempre está mal. Uh, no. En el caso que utilicemos el gerund, estaría bien. Si, si decimos, por ejemplo, visiting her parents on the weekend, sin la S, solo weekend, sí, visiting her parents on the weekend. Um, la, la que está mal es si ustedes colocan to visit, si lo colocamos con infinitivo, si ponemos to visit her parents, ahí sí aparece mala porque lo tenemos off the weekend. Entonces eso no nos va a permitir, ¿verdad?, que, um, que la respuesta sea aceptada como una respuesta correcta si colocamos nosotros la forma como debería ser con una N en lugar de la F. Sí, entonces con, con el infinitivo sí pueda que nos dé problema. En cambio, si lo colocamos con el gerundio, con visiting, ahí sí debería ser aceptada. Visiting her parents on the weekend. And if we say um, visiting her parents on weekends. Um, remember, as per usual, I, I tell you guys, the fact is that um, the platform has a set number of options that it's going to take. And yes, it will work if we say that, like visiting her parents on weekends, it works, uh -huh. but uh -huh. the platform doesn't have it as one of the possible answers. Uh -huh. So if yeah. you do that, I mean, it is a, a, a correct answer in terms of grammar and structure, but it will, yeah. not, it will not be a correct answer in terms of what the platform has said for the correct answers in itself. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're okay. right. Okay, so yeah, that's the only the only issue. As I always tell you, I mean, I know, con ustedes, I think I, I haven't told you guys this, but uh, with people who I have in beginner levels, I always tell them, like, if it was a, a person who was um, scoring them, it will be different, you know, because they can um, type any idea, and if the idea is close enough, or if the, um, the grammatical structure is probably like a different one, but it still works, a person will recognize it as a as a proper answer. But the problem here is that it's a machine and the machine has its set um, number of, of options. And if you don't follow any of those options, then, you know, you're not going anywhere. So, yeah. 
So, guys, for number three, remember, entonces, solo para aclararlo, ¿verdad? En el caso de la número tres del ejercicio 1.2, eh, el problema está en que si ustedes lo colocan con la forma eh, infinitiva, o sea, utilizando el to al principio y el verbo en su forma base, no van a poder colocarlo um, como decir on the weekend, sino que tendría que ser como un, como un OF, sería off the weekends. Si alguien está dispuesto a probarlo, si lo pueden hacer ahorita y me dejan saber, porque si yo lo hago, de todas maneras, a mí me va a parecer buena. Pero si lo hace alguno de ustedes eh, y me dejan saber, ¿verdad? Eh, si, si les aparece eso, sí. O sea, si les valida, si lo colocan to visit her parents off the weekends, sí, con OF, off the weekend. Weekend, perdón, weekend. Would you mind helping in the number five, teacher, please? Uh, 1.5 or five oh, no. of the same the, exercise. The same, same exercise, number five. Uh, when we have ang, mm -hmm. ang and su. Uh, yeah, it's a climbing. Yes. Do you want to yeah. go rock climbing uh, yeah. with, my, with me this weekend? Yeah. Do you want to go rock climbing with me this weekend? And Sue answers. I don't know. Rock climbing sounds dangerous. So mm -hmm. Sue is worried about going rock climbing or yeah going rock climbing going rock climbing yes, yes. going rock climbing okay. going rock climbing mm -hmm. is worried okay. about going rock climbing so that will be the proper answer you can go with a period or without a period okay mm -hmm. okay thank all you all right you're very welcome okie dokie then any other questions that you guys may have thus far Esta vez se ha puesto un poquito más complicada la verdad forma, ¿verdad? Yes. Sí. Yes. 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 It's an advanced it's level, so now we're going to have a little more trouble. It's too frustrating. <laughs> when I... Yeah. yeah. Answers were with, that, with that red X, you know. Oh I totally God. understand, and there's no problem. Remember, uh, my job Me here... Is... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> my job here is to help you guys, you know, complete that out. So, no problem. If you guys are going to ask questions about that, I'm here to help you. So, no biggie. Yeah. Uh, teacher, um, yes. the number uh, 2.5. 2.5. Uh, Let me go yes. get it. Okay. You need oh, to, wait. This, this verb must be con, 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 conjugate. Es que los conjuguemos. I don't know. Recuerden what? que, a ver, ahorita les ayudo, pero les ayudo quizás mañana con eso. Porque okay. recuerden que no, lo que, no, lo que no, no, no debo hacer necesariamente es adelantarme. Okay. Uh -huh. yes, okay. But but for this week you need to one and two, and two. lessons. Yes. yes, 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 yes. So that's why uh, I was telling you. So tomorrow I think we're gonna get there. Okay, so tomorrow we can we can sort that out. It will be okay. which uh exercise qual de los de two point five? Uh, <laughs> all the, I all don't know. Uh, can you explain me this bear must be conjugate? Uh, que los conjugue. I don't know. Uh, avoid. Uh, yeah, what it's what it's asking basically is that um you get the like the right try to take take care of. Uh, my sister is never afraid to. Oh, so it's a tricky topic. Yeah, what you have to do here, what you have to do here is basically to find a synonym to the phrase or the verb. Básicamente a eso se refiere, o sea, dice, ajá, dice conjugar, pero en realidad, what you have to do is to find a synonym. Synonym. So, yes, a synonym, o sea, un, un sinónimo. Like in the first example, my friend never does anything, see, never does anything about his problems. Well, what is... Ignores. 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 Ignores, um... yeah, with an S, because we're talking about a third person. So it will be my friend ignores his oh, problems. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the next I... one, Maria can look at a broken bicycle and the problem right away or find the problem. Well, in this case, it will be identify. You know, finding identify. and identifying is basically the same. So we have like synonyms there. Um, my sister is never afraid to try to take care of. Well, trying to take care of, if we see it on top, we have uh, between the... The different options between the verbs that we can use, we have deal with. So that will be the one. My sister is never afraid to deal with a difficult problem. 
Uh, le voy a dar la mitad, sí, deal with. Le voy a dar la mitad, la otra mitad la hace usted. Ok. okay. Uh, Jill Dong, Jill Dong, always. And then um, uh, we have makes always. his problems worse. Make uh, can be um, replaced with. Chaos. No. Maybe, but Chaos. we're talking about problems. So we're going to use aggravate. 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 Yes. Ah, okay. So in this case, however, the thing is that we're going to do it in the past tense. So aggravate it. Jill Zhuang always aggravate. Uh, yeah. Uh, ah, sí. Pero aquí sería aggravate. Aquí hay otro error entonces. Aquí acabo de identificar otro error porque tendría que ser con S y no con D. Sí, sería aggravates. Aggravates. Aggravate. Jill Zhuang always aggravates um, his problems worse. Eso está raro porque a mí Jill, el nombre Jill me suena más a, a femenino que a masculino, pero bueno, dice his, yeah. así que no problem. Bueno, pero lo que tenemos que buscar nosotros es el verbo, así que el verbo sería, eh, como está en la plataforma, sería aggravated, pero aggravated. como debería ser es aggravates. Sí, aggravates. Yes, ok. But, okay. Solo por eso sí. les voy a dar otro. <risa> ok, number five. Con ustedes nunca había trabajado en esto, que me acuerde. Ok, yes. so, number five. Ruby always follows the recipe close to prevent. That is the word that we have. Prevent okay. problems. Uh, sí, en esta cosa la verdad es que hay un montón de, 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 de errores que han cometido. Porque aquí, por ejemplo, tendría que ser to avoid. Sí, to avoid. Okay. Uh, but it says avoids, like in third person, avoids. Ah, okay. Ruby always follows the recipe closely to avoid. It will be avoid problems when she cooks, but the platform has avoids, avoids. Si quieren colocarlo así en este momento, pueden hacer. Yes, sí, pueden yes hacerlo. I got it. Pero eh, igual yo tengo que reportar eso, sí, porque sí hay un montón de errores aquí. O sea, eso del aggravated no debería ser de esa forma, sino que es aggravate, el avoid debería ser avoid nada más. Así que, bueno, voy a, a ver, mañana espero que puedan resolver algo de eso, porque sí hay un montón de, de detalles en este ejercicio. Ok. Um, any other question you guys may have thus far? No. No, no. tomorrow, teacher. Fíjense que ahorita les quería confirmar acerca de lo de la clase que les había mencionado del viernes y tengo yeah. aquí el, el, el audio que me han enviado, pero uh, mejor mañana les voy a confirmar ya 100%, sí, porque el detalle es que ajá, ahorita pues según lo que me han dicho a mí, según las fechas, sí deberíamos tener clase estos, um, estos dos próximos yes. viernes. Para yes. terminar el 28, que es la fecha supuestamente estipulada, pero ah. aún no sé, o sea, la encargada del grupo le, le consulté hace rato, entonces me dejó un audio, pero pues lo voy a escuchar cuando termine con ustedes ahorita. Ya lo vi por ahí. Ok, bueno, to entonces, yes, if we are going to have questions tomorrow, we have to read today. Sí, so, <laughs> yo creo que ya la mayoría ya lo leyeron, es incluso. So we have extended families here. You guys already know that we're going to be able, be able to find some um some new words most likely we're going to be able to find some new words and that is the main objective so extended families uh it will be part of the topic for today of course because we're talking about family and uh, well i will do a quick reading you know you so to to set the example and maybe you guys can get to hear some of the words that you, that you might not be as familiar with and then you are going to have the chance to do the reading yourself. All right, so extended families. Extended families consist of several generations of people and can include biological parents and their children, as well as in-laws, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Extended families are typical of collective cultures where all family members are interdependent and share family responsibilities, including um, ch childrenering. Uh, Childrenering roles. Extended families often value the wider kin group more than individual relationships, which can le lead to loyalty issues within the family and also cause difficulties in a couple's relationship where a close relationship between a husband and a wife may be seen as a threat to the uh, wider kin group. 
another factor that can add to the complexity of a relationship of relationships in an extended family is the need to negotiate the expectations and needs of each family member. Complex uh, extended family relationships can also detract from the parent or parent-child relationship. Complex intergenerational um, relationships can complicate the child-parent relationship as they can cause confusion regarding the identity of the primary parents. Such confusions can result in a child understanding the authority of her existing parent and feeling uh, uncertain about her environment. Okay, so that is um, the reading for today. Before we get started, before you guys get to reading this, any words that you have identified as new words? Are there any words in this reading that you guys don't know just yet? Children. 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 Okay, so children earning roles, básicamente se refieren a los, las labores de, um, de paternidad. So children earning is like when you are, you know, like we all share the responsibility of, of educating a child. So children earning, that's what you do. Children earning is when you're educating a child. So And children earning. Wider, wider kin group. Okay, wider means broad, you know, like it's uh, more extensive than than regular. So wider mm -hmm. is that. And kin is a word very similar to kind. Its meaning is very, very close oh. from kind. But kin is used to... Um, to identify groups of people who come from the same mm -hmm. background. So like, okay. um, like, a, like a tribe, you know? So wider kin group will be like the, the group as a whole, you know, the, 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 yeah. the whole group is more important than the individual yeah. relationships. So it's like in extended families, when you have, uh, or at least it is the, the theory that when you live in extended families, um, it is kind of difficult to have uh, closer relationships with like your children or your wife because childs normally grow um, seeing their grandparents as their parents. And it has happened in my family before, actually. I have a niece who used to call her grandma aunt because she will listen to like all of us around her um, calling my aunt aunt. So she grew mm -hmm. into calling her aunt as well. Instead okay. of calling her grandma, she will call her um, tia Sonia instead of saying yeah. of calling her abuela. You know, and it was it was actually um, her grandmother. So those are some of the things that happen when you live in an extended family. And also the boundaries of um, couples themselves are supposed to be deteriorated and sometimes kind of blur. You know, it's very like difficult sometimes to um, to establish the difference or the division between um, the family and the couple itself. No sé quiénes de ustedes hayan tenido la oportunidad de vivir así en familias ex extensas, but yeah, in my case, I only had um, that experience for like six months, but I, I saw that some of these things actually happen in extended families. Okay, anyway, uh, so who would like to go ahead and read this um, paragraph first? Me, teacher. All right, then uh, go get it, Tiger. Uh, the first lines. Sure. Yeah, Complete. we can do it. Uh, okay. We can do it until um, children are enrolled. Okay. Extended families consist of several generations of people and can and can include biological parents and their children as well as in-laws, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Extended families are typical of collective culture where all, all families member are inter, inter, interdependent, interdependent and share family interdependent and share family responsibilities including ch child child earning roles children earning i give a name children. it will be okay. children earning yeah okay. children earning children earning roles okay mm -hmm. children children roles children. okay There we go. All right. So who's going to continue from here? From this period to uh, King Group? May I? Okay. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Extended families often value their wider King Group 
more than individual relationships. Um, I can see all the all the all the sentence over there, teacher, which can lead to loyalty issues within the family and also cause difficulties in a I don't know what it says there over there because I in a see. couple. Uh, uh, in a couple's relationship where a close relationship between a husband and wife may may be, may be seen as a, a threat to the wider king group all right very good thank you who is going to continue from here on from another to um relationship me teacher okay go ahead another factor that can add to the complexity of relationships in an extended family is the need to negotiate the expectations and needs to each family member. Complex extended family relationships can also detract from the parent's child relationship. All right, very good, thank you. Uh, and who is going to wrap it up? Who is going to okay. end from complex to environment? Okay, teacher. Go ahead. Complete intergeneration, intergeneration relationship can complicate the child-parent relationship as they can cause confusion regarding the identify, identity, identity of the primary parent. Such confusion can result in a child undermining the authority of her exi existing parent and feeling uncertain about her environment environment all right very good so yeah that's exactly what happened to my niece you know eso, <laughs> eso es una cosa complicada es con el inglés con la, con la pronunciación what happened to my niece que pasó con mis rodillas ahí, ahí <laughs> se puede entender también but no we're talking about family all right so yeah, that is part of uh, what we have as for reading. Now I would like to have another group uh, to continue up. So who would like to get started on the first section? Maybe Joaquin? So you will have to read uh, all the way up to here, to roles. Okay. Let me extend it more, there you go. Extended family consists of several generations of people and can include biological parents and their children as well as our in-laws, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Extended family are typical of collective culture where our family members are independent and share family responsibility, including children, children aging hurdles. All right, thank you. Very good. Uh, now, um, probably we can have Luis, Luis Mesquita, to continue from children roles um, to kin group, all the way to here. Ooh, sorry, ah, dang it. To kin okay. group. Uh, extended families often value the wider kin group more than individual relationships, which can lead to loyalty issues within the family and also ca cause diffi difficult difficulties mm -hmm. in a couple relationship where a close relationship between a husband and wife may be seen as a threat to the wider kin group. All right, very good. Now we're going to have uh... Eduardo, now that you're here, Eduardo, you're going to continue from another to relationship. From another to relationship. Just hold on, another to relationship. Hold on, hold on. Because I, I am I am connected from my phone and uh, the letters are very, very tiny. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, or another. Let's try. Oh, no, okay, another factor, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, from here. Yes, exactly. All right, hold on. Let me, let me make it a little bit bigger. All right, <laughs> sure. Right. Another factor that can add to the complexity. Hold on. Complexity. Of relationship is extended in, in, in an extended family is the need to negotiate the expectations and needs of each family member, complex extended family relationship can also detract 
from the parent-child relationship. Complex intergenerational relationships can complicate the child-parent relationship as they can cause confusion regarding the identity of the primary parent. Such conf <clears throat> confusion. So such confusion can result in a child undermining the authority of her existing parent and feeling uncertain about her environment. Okay, good. Very nice. So you were supposed to read only to here, but you went all the way, and that is also acceptable. All right. Very, very good. Um, so here, the only thing with this word, uh, were a couple of words that I find that are kind of tricky, and of course, uh, it is necessary for us to, um, to practice on those ones, will be something like, for example, complexity. Yeah, so complexity will be one of those words. Um, we also had a little bit of problems with difficulties That's or right. we had difficulties with difficulties um so yeah <laughs> difficulties um well relationship i think it's kind of like um simple you know then negotiate negotiate esa es una de esas palabras a veces que o sea, se lee bastante diferente a como se escribe it is negotiate um another one that i was identifying in the beginning i kind of lost it there was one word here. sorry Oh, inter 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 interdependent. Yeah. Inter oh, interdependent, interdependent. Interdependent. Yeah, inter interdependent. Sí, o sea, que de dependen de forma interna, interdependent. Inter uh, then also intergener intergenerational. That is another um, complex word. Intergenerational. Um, I think identity, not really. Identity, well, yeah. If we're going to pronounce it as, as Americans, or as people from the US, we will have to say identity. 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 Mm -hmm. identity. Yeah. We're gonna subtract the first T right here. So it will be identity. identity. Um what else? I think there was one more, but I lost undermining. That. Undermining. Uh undermining. Yeah, undermining. which is like lowering their importance. Yeah, undermining the import the, the authority. Yeah. Undermining. With that principle, I forgot it. Jesus. Okay, but yeah, some of those words are words that maybe are going to require us, you know, to um, to practice a little more. Also, confusion. Well, confusion is not too tricky, but um, the sound at the end, confusion, that is the only thing that maybe we will have to, um, to kind of practice. But, you know, reading, as I always tell you, reading is very important because through reading, you know what you're going to say. You know, you have it right in front of you. If you have a book, if you have a journal, anything that you can, um, you're able to read, you have it in front of yourself. And uh, the most important part of it is that you have to focus on pronunciation. And that is why I will always invite you guys to take some time out of your days, to take some time during the weekends to um, read one paragraph or two so you can, you know, adapt your mouth to the next or the new language and also you can start grabbing more words into your um, your knowledge. So yeah, reading will always be a good option if you want to go ahead uh, and do those. You know, get more confidence, get also um, more fluency, and get more vocabulary. But that is something that you can continue practicing on your own. Now, before we go, I want to share with you this tiny family tree. Now, in this family tree, we have basically all members of a regular extended family. In extended families, of course, we're not all going to live in the same house. But when you have an extended family, this is what it will look like to some extent. Um, we'll start with this person right here, who is, well, myself or the husband. Uh, and we'll start with him. So the person who is married to him, if you guys, I think it is something that you guys already know is going to be his wife. So the wife is like the person who is married to a man. Now, if it is a woman, the one that we're talking about, um, the person who is married to her is going to be her husband. Um, yes, Janet? Sorry, teacher. In this case, uh, what means first cousin once removed? Uh, first cousin once removed will be el, el 
primo en segundo grado, que nosotros decimos en español. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thank because those are the children of your cousins. Okay. Mm -hmm. Los oh, hijos de nuestros primos, that will be the first cousin, uh, I mean, or, yeah, first cousin okay. once removed. And if you have uh, um, cousins of your first cousins once removed, that will be your um, cousins second removed. Sí, or uh, twice removed, sorry, twice removed. Entonces serían los, esos ya ni siquiera sé cómo, cómo identificarlos. O sea, serían como los hijos de los hijos de mis primos. Sí, mm. los hijos de los hijos de mis primos. Those will be my cousins twice removed. All right. Teacher, yes, 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 yes. My grandfather, él solo decía oh. que los demás esos ya eran parientes. Sí, ya parientes, ajá. Yeah, that's what my dad says as well. Yeah, he's like, no, that's nothing of me. Yo porque yes. a veces quiero sentir que personas mayores que mí son mis sobrinos. Yo le digo, no, son mis sobrinos. No invente. Sí. Son mis sobrinos. Yeah, but no, they're, right. they're basically just, you know, just yes. relatives. But uh, yes, relative. yeah, just relatives. Okay. All right. Um, so something that actually is new for me is the fact that, um, you know, the Parents of your grandparents are, of course, your great-grandparents. O sea, los bisabuelos are known as the great-grandparents. Something I didn't know is the fact that the uh, siblings of your grandparents are actually your great-aunts uh, and mm -hmm. uncles. That's something I didn't know, that, you know, yeah. your, your, um, the, the, the siblings of your grandparents uh, yeah. are your great-aunts or great-uncles. Tío abuelo y tía abuela. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. yes, that's something new for me. I didn't know that you could refer to them as that. Antes de eso, <laughs> yo solo decía um, grand aunt, your grand uh, uncle. I didn't know that is great, great aunt and great uncle. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Uh, then, uh, for example, another one that is interesting for me is the one that's for the in-laws, you know, the, the people who are uh, married to... Um, to what? It will be to your, your siblings. To your siblings. Uh -huh, your brothers and sisters. Brother. Those will be your yes. in-laws. And also uh, the siblings of your wife or husband. Ahora, oh. para mañana entonces vamos a seguir con estos otros que son miembros de la familia que a veces no se mencionan tanto. Si sí, estos son algunos aparte. But that's going to be for tomorrow. Now, for today, I think that's basically it. I wish we had more time to continue um, talking about family, but it is all done. So all I have to say right now is thank you guys very much for your attention and your participation in tonight's class. I hope I'll see you tomorrow. And tomorrow I'll clarify what's going to happen, if we're going to have classes on Friday or not. But for now, thank you very much. Have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.